Exercise 8. In this exercise, we take a look at Creo's technology when it comes to sweat blends. Other systems call this uh, technique of lofting, so uh, the terms are a little bit different, but really the idea is the same. We're going to design the boat hull that you see here on this little image. And we're going to start off by just offsetting planes to begin with, and then we're going to draw sections, like you can kind of see these little sections here. And we'll use the spline tool for this. We haven't yet used the spline tool. But let's go ahead and take a look at it. Here's an example of what we're going to generate. This is a boat I kind of played with a little bit. A little bit different than what we're going to create, but nonetheless, same concept. So I'm going to go ahead and start a new part, and we're going to call this E8. Start off by making sure your planes are turned on. So under here, plane display, display should be turned on. Select the front plane, and go to the plane tool here, and for the offset for the very first plane, we can see it's going to be six inches. So go ahead and type in six on the datum display. Hit OK. That plane, should, that datum one should be selected already. You can now go to the plane tool again, and the next one's going to be eight inches offset from the first datum that we created. And then the last plane, if you click again on plane there will only be one inch away from that one. and Hit OK. Now what we're going to do is select the front plane in the feature tree and start our sketch. Go normal to by clicking on the front view orientation and zoom up a bit and take your line tool. Click here, drag up a vertical line and then drag, uh, draw a horizontal line and then change these. And then in this case, you see that the dimensions for this is going to be two inches high by two and a half inches wide. So you could type in 2.5 wide by two inches high. And you can reposition those if you like. You could even turn the planes off temporarily so you can see it a little bit easier. And then zoom up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the spline tool and at the vertex on the left, click drag out like a 45 degree angle about a third of the way there click and right here click again and then connect and middle click after you connect after you click to connect then middle click okay at this point we could put dimensions in or we could leave a free form if you want to just kind of uh, play around i'd like to leave it free form to some extent but be where you could go to the dimension tool a uh, normal and actually click on these points and dimension to those but i want to us to be able to modify this. So if you want to make a pirate ship or if you want to make a battleship, you can modify it. Uh, we'll just have these basic dimensions in place. All right, go ahead and hit OK at that point. And if you rotate, turn on your planes again. And now you can see the, that's the front plane is actually the back of the boat. Now click on Datum 1 and start a sketch. Actually cancel out. Rather than create a new sketch, why don't we just go ahead and copy and paste our old one and reuse it. Because technically, if you look at the book, it's all the same profile that just get a little larger or smaller in certain cases. So what you do here is middle click a couple times. Make sure you hit escape. Don't have anything pre-selected. Now click one time on sketch one in the tree. And now I released it. I'm going to hold down control on my keyboard and hit C or copy. Now I could click on datum one just one time and release it and then hold down control and hit V and what it does here it allows you to position your sketch just go ahead and hit sketch and then you can move your your little little image that you have there in place near datum 1 go to the lower left hand corner of the datum the upper right where, just about where mine is if you look carefully you can click there and drop it now what you want to do with this is you're going to go ahead and you get these little light blue numbers that appear. And this is the positioning, how far it's positioned offset from that origin. We actually want those to both be set to zero. So double click on those small dimensions and change them to zero. Now it's actually in alignment with this one. Okay, for this next section, we're going to go ahead and and we're going to increase the size. So it's going to be 3 by 2.375. So 3 inches wide, 2.375 high. So I'll click on this, 2.375, and 3 inches for the width. Now make sure 
that this point doesn't start intersecting like this. Be very careful. See how there's an intersection there? Make sure it's a, far enough away where you, you get the character that you like, but not intersecting. OK, now that we have those dimensions, we could just hit OK, apply. Now go to Datum 2, and we'll do the same thing. Click on Datum 2, hold Control, and hit V as in Victor. Hit the Sketch button up here, and move this over to the lower left of Datum 2. Click, and change those light blue numbers to 0 and 0. Now these dimensions are going to change too significantly for this particular sketch. It's going to be minimized to 0.6 high by 0.675 wide. So this 2 is going to be 0.6 and then this 2.5 is 0.675. It's made it considerably smaller. Again make sure that there's no overlapping geometry like this. You don't want that happening. If so, grab the little point and drag it out away from the geometry. And you could go ahead and hit the green check mark to apply. Now for the last one, it's so tiny um, that we're going to go ahead and draw it in. It's so easy to do. Click on datum 3 and start a sketch. And go normal 2 by clicking on the little AB button and go to front. You should be able to see these are all in alignment. Now zoom up to that upper corner, click and drag out a horizontal line middle click and that's going to be as you see here it's going to be 0.01 by 0.01 so double click on this 0.01 and then take the line tool and draw a vertical line and same thing you could actually make them equal and then take your spline and once again draw a connection between these and it could just go straight across. This is so small, it's not even going to be seen. And then hit OK. One last element that we need to add is going to be on the right plane. Go ahead and click on the right plane, either from the feature tree or right here, and start a sketch. And we just need to put a vector in for the direction. So go to Line. Click on this little edge in the upper right corner of the front plane. Drag it clear across, and it could extend beyond this. Just make sure it's horizontal. And then go ahead and type in 15. It could actually go well beyond that. It doesn't have to stop at 15. It just makes for an easy line to draw, though. And hit OK. Now we are ready. We could go ahead and turn off our planes. It might be a little easier to select with those gone. But now you can see these different profiles here. We're going to go to Swept Blend. And make sure it's set to solids. Create a solid. If you create a surface, it doesn't. It's okay, but uh, it's going to be hollowed out, and you're going to have difficulty modeling the top of the, bo uh, the boat when you create it. Okay, go to references and the trajectory. Go ahead and select this edge for the trajectory. It's that 15-inch line. Now go to sections, and we're going to select sections. So selected sections, you want to click on and click on the very last one in the upper left corner and then go ahead and hit insert you have to hit insert every time unfortunately go ahead and click on this section and you'll start seeing a preview hit insert and then select this upper left corner of the small one insert this next one you're going to have to zoom up and select this corner and Take a close look, make sure it's not doing anything funny. In this case, it actually is. It's kind of moving around here. So you can actually um, move this dot to rotate it around so it's not twisting. It was actually starting to twist at the end there. If that happens, just grab the dot and drag it around until it untwists and hit insert. And now you could. Uh, And I actually made a mistake. That last one you don't want to hit insert on, so make sure uh, you could click on that, hit uh, remove, and it'll remove that. Then you should see the green check mark. As long as this is all highlighted, you should be in good shape. Hit the green check mark to apply. And zoom out, and now you can see you have half your boat completed. Okay, now we need to mirror it across this flat end. So 
go ahead and click on the sweat blend that appears in the tree and click on mirror. And now for reference, select the side face and hit the green check mark. And now you can see that you have the bullet hole completed. At this point, you could go ahead, if you want, um, you could dress it up a bit. Like, for example, I could go to the right plane and start a sketch. And this is purely optional. I'm going to go normal to, to the right view orientation. So I want to trim that off so it's not so flat. I could go over here and I could take my line tool and put some geometry in here as a tool to remove that bottom section. So I could go now to the OK, extrude, and I want to remove material. So select remove material. Over here, click on, you want it both sides. And just drag this out so it gives it plenty of space to cut and remove that material and hit the green check mark. So we're looking at make it a little bit more streamlined. We could go in and you could put rounds on there. Like over here, I could click on this and then grab the little dot and smooth that out a bit. And if I want to put additional rounds or chamfers, I can put some on this edge, this edge here. All right, to sketch on the top, since it's flat, it should be flat. Otherwise, check, maybe you might have had one of your sections off. Remember, we set those 0 to 0 on each one of those sections we copied. Sometimes I've seen where students don't they move it or somehow it's not zero zero so it's not flat on the top. But normally it's flat so you could select it and start a sketch on it. And at this point you could take an offset edges. So like we could click and offset this edge and we'll offset that by point two. Apply and do the same over here. Click on this edge. Point. Actually, it should be minus point 0.2 because the arrow is pointed away from it, so minus point 0.2. Okay. And then we could draw an arc in here. Draw it right across. Make it a little shapely design. And then trim away the excess. So you go to the remove or tri uh, delete segment, drag this through to trim that off. And then at the tip, you're going to have to remove those little. Entities. Be careful, there's little fragments all over the place. That will prevent you from extruding if you leave little fragments. There's one here too. And make sure there's nothing else left. I think we're in good shape. Okay. So now I could go over here to hit OK. I could go to extrude. And I could extrude that up. And under options, add taper. And you could go ahead and make it a little bit more streamlined. Hit apply. And then over here you can draw some additional geometry on this surface. Maybe a rectangle or actually go with a center rectangle. So it's comes up here. We'll make like a motor housing. Do the same with that. We could go to OK, extrude, set a height, and options, add taper. Grab that little dot to adjust the taper. Apply. Go to the rounds and add some rounds on here. Could go and add it some additional or add a chamfer. Okay, if you wanted to put a sail on it, you could select the top face here, start a sketch, and draw a circle, center it, and extrude that. So, okay, extrude that up really high here, and then add a taper to that as well. And I could go to the right plane and start a sketch. And we'll go normal two on that one first. So normal to the right. And draw the post here for the sail. Right about there. Draw that out. Very thin little post here we'll make. 
and we'll put a little bit of taper on there while we uh, smooth this out. Okay, and then at that point, uh, actually, let me minimize this just a little bit more. Make it 0 0.375. Okay, and we're ready to revolve that. Go to OK, hit Revolve, select this bottom edge, and now you got making your uh, area for your sail there. Okay, that's about all I wanted to go over, and you're welcome to make a boat if you like out of that and have a little fun with it. And that completes exercise eight.